Praise God. Thank you all for coming today to be part of our service. And I also welcome everyone who is going to view us online today. Let's uh, begin our service with a word of prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you, Father God, for giving us this time today, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to dwell in your presence, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Every time we come into your presence, we are enriched, Father God. We are empowered, Father God. We are prepared, Lord, to face the battle that life throws at us each day, Father God. Thank you, Father God. We believe today you will refresh our minds, Lord. You will refresh our hearts, Father God. And Father God, our bodies will also be healed today by the power of the Holy Spirit, Father God. Lord, we surrender the entire service, the worship team, the word that is spoken today, and each member that is listening online, and each member that is seated here today, Lord. May each person be blessed abundantly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I request Brother David and Brother Thiru to lead us in a time of worship. Mm -hmm. Praise Lord everyone. Nice to see you all once again. The Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Sing a new song. And we have come together to worship the Lord. As we come into your presence, we remember every blessing. And the Bible also says, come, blessing of the Lord. He has done so many great things which we have ne never even dreamt of. So God is, I used to say, God is my dream God. He used to even, you know, we cannot explain who God is in our lives. Everyone has their own testimonies. God is supernatural. He is amazing. So, let's sing the song because of your love. Of your love, we'll be 
Cause of your love. Amen. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. You are my joy. You are my song. You are the well, the one I'm drawing from. Your love defends me, Lord. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, you're my portion, my salvation, Hallelujah, you're my portion, my salvation, Amen. Yes, Lord, surely you are the strength of my heart, my soul, and your love affects me. We can say that, Lord, from the time we, we've been with you, Lord, from the time you've been with us, Lord, we know the difference of how you've been leading us and, and protecting us from all kinds of things. Lord, we are so thankful and grateful to you. And we declare that surely the Lord, the Lord's love is on our side. The Lord's love is for us and you are there for us. We can tangibly see you presence in our life. We can sense you are there always with us. In times of in times of our sickness, you are a healer. In times of a war, you are my tower. Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 Jesus Lover of my soul, Jesus, I will never let you go. Take me from the mighty clay, you set my feet upon the rock, and now I know, I love you, and I need you. Though my world may fall, I'll never let you go. My Savior, my closest friend, I will worship you till the very end. Jesus, lover of my soul, Jesus. I will never let you go. Take me from the bad place. Set my feet upon the rock. And now I know. I love you. I need you. My world is full. I never let you go. My Savior. My closest friend, I will worship you until the very end. Oh, Jesus, the lover of my soul, Jesus, I will never let you go. Take me from the mighty and find me upon the rock. My closest friend, I will worship you until the very end. Oh yes, Lord, we worship you, Jesus, this time. So let's take this time to worship the Lord. We declare, we tell him, but Lord, we love you. We love you for you've been so good. You're worthy of all our praises, Lord. We want to bless your name through songs and through the music. We might be little people and we have little music things, what we have might be little. But Lord, we want to give it all we have to you. We come as we are to your presence, Lord. We thank you for you. Accept our praise. We thank you for you. Accept our lives. 
We want to rededicate our life. We want to recommit our life to you. To serve you, Lord. To worship you. Till the very end of our life, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Jesus. Amen. Yeshua, yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, and yours is the glory forever and ever.
Jesus worship the Lord for some time. Lift your voice and talk to the Father, the Holy Spirit. Let your presence fill this place of God, Jesus. Welcome, Holy Spirit. But come Holy Spirit of Jesus. Bless with your presence, O oh God. Bless with your anointing, O oh Lord Jesus. Let us fill us with your power, O Lord Jesus. Fill us, O oh Lord. Make us holy, O Lord Jesus. Make us holy, O Lord. As you are holy, O Lord Jesus. Thank you for loving us at this time, O Lord Jesus. That two or three gathered in my name have been in your presence as your word tells of God. Thank you for being with us, O God Jesus. Thank you for choosing us, O oh God, Jesus. We are little people, O oh God. Lord, thank you for being with us, O oh God, Jesus. Enlarge our territory, O oh Lord, Jesus. Fill this place, O oh God, Jesus. Many chairs are handy, O oh Lord, Jesus. Get many souls, O oh God. Use us, O oh Lord, to evangelize many unsaved people, O God, Jesus. Use us, O God, Jesus. At the same O Lord, people are perishing without your knowledge, O God, Jesus. Use us, O God, Jesus. Use us each and every day in our life, O Lord, God, Jesus. Let our talents be used for a kingdom growth, O God, Jesus. Whatever we do, whatever we speak, whatever we try to do in this world, O oh God, Jesus. Let it please you, O oh God, not the people of this world, O oh God, Jesus. Lord, at this time, O oh Lord, speak to us through your servant, O oh God, Jesus. Speak to us, O oh Lord. Mr. Clear, O oh Lord Jesus, what we need to be changed in our lives, O oh God Jesus. Mold us according to your will, O oh God Jesus. Mold us according to your will, O oh God Jesus. Shape us, Lord Jesus. At this time, O oh Lord, commit this entire section into your mighty hands, O oh God Jesus. You take each and every Part of the service of God. You take control of each and every part of the service of God, Jesus. Let your name be glorified, Lord. At this time, O oh Lord, I pray for the people who are viewing online, O oh God, Jesus. Bless each and every individual, O oh God, Jesus. Bless them, O oh Lord. Lord, satisfy the needs of God, Jesus. Motivate, motivate them, O oh Lord, Jesus. Give them peace and Happiness in their lives, O oh God, Jesus. Let your name be glorified, O oh God. As the people who are in struggles, O oh God, deliver them at this time, O oh Lord, Jesus. Deliver them from all pain and agony, O oh Lord, Jesus. Use them to testify to this world, O oh God, Jesus. I commit everything into your mighty hands, in Jesus' name, I pray. Thank you so much, uh, worship team. Thank you so much, Brother Thiru, for that beautiful song that God's love defends us. And it's such a powerful thing when we understand how much God loves us. And no matter what happens, we know that God's love will protect and defend us. And thank you, Brother David, for that wonderful prayer. You once again confirm so many things that are in line with the message today. So, once again, welcome all of you. Thank you for joining our service. Let's get into God's word today. So we've been studying over the past few weeks from Matthew chapter 5 
a wonderful teaching, one of the first sermons that Jesus gives. And he gives the sermon, the famous sermon called the Sermon on the Mount. And if you look at how the sermon begins, it begins by Jesus telling us what is it that he expects from us. What are the things that need to be put aside? What are the things that we need to be careful about believers? Because the Bible says, those who are holy, be holy as God is holy. So holiness, many don't touch upon that or preach upon that. But look at the words of Jesus. He's focusing so much on our hearts and on our minds. What should, what we should permit and what we should not permit. And there's a reason behind all of this is that he only wants us to get closer and closer to him and walk and talk with him in, an, in a seamless manner. That's what Jesus intends. So today we're going to look at uh, God's word from Matthew chapter 5 verses 27 to 30. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. So Jesus takes these things very, very seriously. Last week, we understood how Jesus looks at anger and how we need to manage anger in a godly way. Today, Jesus is touching upon adultery and then we notice that Jesus equates adultery and even if a man thinks of a woman lustfully, it's, it's like he has already committed adultery. So look at when you wait and see how much of weight Jesus is giving to the thoughts, to the desires of a person because he knows the entry to a man's heart is what he hears, what he sees. So today's message, we'll understand as believers, what should you and I be careful about? You may think that, okay, I've come to this stage of life. I've seen so much. I may not be tempted. But Satan is an opportunist. He tempts the young and he tempts the old. And he knows the exact area of weakness where he can tempt you. And at what time so that you will fall and heal make you step back rather than progressing freely and moving freely in God's will for you. The definition of adultery from the Webster's dictionary says, a sexual sin of a married person with another person who is other than his spouse. But when Jesus talks about this, he says, but I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. It's, he doesn't say that if any man looks at a woman, it's wrong or if any man just sees some women, it's wrong. No, he says, if any man looks at a woman lustfully, it says. So the problem is, if he looks at the lady with a bad intent and continues to look in an evil way, that is where the problem begins. But then, interestingly, as I was going through some references, I found references in the book of James, in the book of Job. So I just want to touch what James says about this matter. James 1 verse 14 to 15 says, But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. After desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And then sin when it's fully grown gives birth to death. Do you see that there is a sequence of events? Sin just you just don't go sleep, wake up in the morning and sin. No, there is a sequence and to give you a biblical example of the sequence, first there is the thought and after you begin to think that thought as you keep thinking translate into an action and then the consequences of that action is death. Look at the life of King David. David he went and he saw Bathsheba. All he had to do, okay, was saw a lady bathing. He could have just turned away, walked away, a simple thing. Turned away, walked away and that would have settled it. But no, he looked, he continued to look and then 
he sent then he must have schemed and thought about what he is going to do next then he sent his servant to call for Bathsheba then we know that he committed adultery but what happened as a result of committing adultery he had to to cover up his tracks he had to he literally he did he murdered Bathsheba's husband so you see how James describes that first a person is enticed by his own lust first the thoughts come in you keep thinking about it will translate into an action and then you have to deal with the consequences many a time we think okay yes God forgives us God wipes out even those cons if you've sinned and Satan has touched your body or he is open your mind to depression when you come to Jesus he will come and he will restore you he'll heal you completely without a trace our God is completely able and possible but why do you want to deal with those consequences you are going in a beautiful assignment why do you want to deal with that consequences come back struggle face those things in your body in your mind no already this life is full of challenges every day you will face challenges in your homes in your offices in your thoughts what this devil puts into your hands so this is the sequence now the next part is that there are various forms of sin what can be sin to you may not or an area of temptation for you may not necessarily be an area of temptation for another person so be be merciful with your brother who has fallen into sin you may have overcome a certain temptation and you may be strong so don't cast on see this brother he's going through this how can he do this no no remember what if that same temptation knocks at your door again so be very merciful with your brother and help it if you know a brother is suffering help him but here so there are various forms of temptation some may be tempted with alcohol some may be tempted with the internet pornography some may be tempted with things we don't even know of but the important thing is you have to guard your heart for example just think okay today on YouTube you have these shots it keeps on coming today the media the advertising industry all is catered towards enticing people to draw them into lust as long as you see an ad like that may be a little obscene all you have to do just scroll by go through that ad just scroll by and when you do that all of heaven is going to give you that strength to just cross cross that ad turn the other way turn away but then if you stop and begin to go into one ad will lead to another and another and another and that is where and what Jesus calls is when these thoughts and desires are conceived and entice it leads you into sin I just want to give you an example that is dear to my heart and I always keep this anytime you are tempted I always keep this take for example if you are going for a holiday and you are going to holiday maybe some of you like the beaches you are thinking about that holiday you are planning that holiday you are going to go spend time in the cool of the evening near the seashore you are just going to sit enjoy with your family or some of you are nature lovers you want to go stay in like a jungle resort a jungle lodge where you can view nature tea estates or whatever so you are thinking about this and you are driving on the way and you sometimes will have butterflies in your stomach just thinking about that beautiful place that you are going to but supposing there is a, a small animal that you see and you like that animal you never know everything that looks cute may not come and kiss you or lick you it may bite you go take some time you play with this animal but what happens then you stay with that animal you keep enjoying that animal but actually you have a much more beautiful destination something that's going to bring you much more joy and peace when you get to that destination and that's how heaven is going to be and today you and I must realize the very fact we are studying these things is to strengthen our relationship with the Lord and I feel God is perfect in his timings and if we are studying this to get closer and walking closer to God I definitely feel the end is at hand the coming of the Lord is very very near so I believe that we are in a prophetic time what we are studying is not by accident so this helps me keep my eyes on eternity when you have that beautiful destination all of you I'm sure know everything that you do for the Lord's kingdom will not go unrewarded you might clean a chair in the church you might just share the gospel with a person you might be loving and gentle share a cup of tea a cup of water with someone it doesn't go unrewarded in the millennium 
some of us are going to have like areas maybe chinnapanna halli martha halli some of us are going to rule over bigger areas maybe bangalore east bangalore south or bangalore west some of us are going to be put in charge of bangalore and some of us maybe even karnataka so everything that you do for the lord's kingdom has compound effects into eternity has great effects into the millennium so be conscious of that this life 100 years 120 years if 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 you are able to live but even that in the light of eternity it's forever and ever and ever wise man will focus on eternity then secondly there is a strong connection between the eyes and the heart we all know that the eyes is also called or is sometimes spoken of as the doorway into the heart let's look at what job says about the eyes job 31 one says i made a covenant with my eyes not to look lustfully at a young woman if my steps have turned from the path if my heart has been led by my eyes or if my hands have been defiled if my heart has been enticed by a woman or if i have looked at my neighbors do so job says that he made a covenant with his eyes that he has decided and he has decided so you and i must make a decision if there's any area in our life that we know we have an area of weakness if it's not come to you today definitely i can guarantee it will knock at your door tomorrow so job made a decision that he'll not go too often to his neighbors lest he look at a neighbor and fall in temptation and enter his house neither will he keep neither he said that he will not look at a woman lustfully or a young lady lustfully in the old testament job in those days where the kind of challenges are not as bad as it is today everything today is catered to evil desires and the flesh and job faced this challenge but he said he decided in his heart that he will not go that way i want to give you what john scott says on the same subject john scott says i doubt if every human being has fallen victim to immorality who has not first opened the flood gates of passion through the rise do you see how important is what we watch what we hear the bible says evil communication uh, spoils good manners or evil communication disturb will ruin good manners so if you keep watching these things if you keep listening to things if you keep watching these tv serials movies and things like that you can take you can be sure that one day you will go and do those things if you keep watching too much of violent movies one day on the road you may just react violently or if you keep watching other obscene things one day those things will be fulfilled in your life so that's why it's very important that's why jesus said guard your heart with all diligence out of them are the issues of life if you want your life to be beautiful glorious in fire and vigor for god guard your heart and one doorway to the heart is the eyes and today as each of you are listening to the message i believe 75% of your challenges will be resolved today because you know the next time you scroll youtube you know just scroll by the next time you have the tendency to look at someone in a lustful way just turn away it's as simple as that just turn away just scroll away and i guarantee those thoughts are not going to come you are not going to fulfill those evil desires just turn away so that the doorway into your heart is the eyes and the ears so be careful what you watch and remember you are not alone in the struggle all you have to do just nod your head turn away scroll away and all of heaven the holy spirit is going to help you and strengthen you as we continue thirdly i just want to quickly touch upon this point and we'll close if your eye causes you to stumble verse 29 says if your eye causes you to stumble gouge it out and throw it away it is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell and if your right hand causes you to stumble cut it off and throw it away it is better for you to lose one part of your body 
then for your whole body to go into hell. So th does this mean that every believer has to cut his hand, his right hand or his right eye away? If you look at it literally, that means every believer, a lot of believers should be walking around without eyes and hands and then every other believer is going to go to hell. But that is not what this means. But there is an implication and there is an impact that God is telling. In those days, in the Jewish culture, if you look at, they will say, son of my right hand. Or they will say, this is the son of my youth. And generally, they will say, son of my right hand, meaning, this is the child of my youth. This is the child of my strength. This is my first son. And that is what they will follow in the Jewish culture. And to cut off something like that is very, very important and impossible and difficult. So God is just equating that your life and eternity is so much important, is so valuable that literally if anything causes you to stumble, cut it off. It's not worth it at all. Just get rid of it. Don't think twice. Don't have second thoughts. Okay, we can do this for a little while. Do that for a little while. Have these pet sins. It's not affecting me so much. No, no, no. Don't even for a minute think. You don't know how Satan is and what kind of a strategist he is. He will look at opportune moments and we all know that our times of temptation for each of us can be different. So, not only should we be careful about different kinds of temptation, but the timing of temptation is also very important. Sometimes you might be really tired and your emotions are weary. You can fall into sin. You can fall into temptation. Sometimes somebody may have spoken something to you or somebody in your office or your office pressures can be a lot. And that time you can only be tempted to fall into sin at that time. And remember, Satan goes like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He knows exactly when to tempt you. When you are really tired or when somebody has said something, he goes on replaying it in your mind or some, something else has just pressured you or troubled you, your work. He knows when to attack you. So be on guard. Satan cannot devour anybody, but he seeks who is that person who will give in to temptation? Who is that person? When he's at his weakest, he will tempt you. So, and Satan can also tempt a person when everything is going well, when he is really successful, he's had a big success, maybe at a conference, or he's shared a certain topic, he's done a successful training. At your times of success also, be more on guard. It's easier to fall during that time rather than at times when you're bored and idle. Those are also opportune times. So these are times when you have to be a little careful and just be on guard so that you don't fall into sin. Lastly, it's important not to go another. Lastly, concluding, it's very important to be careful not to go to places where you are tempted. Or if you know that if you have, for example, if you've been an alcoholic, God has delivered you from alcohol, you don't want to go and build a house exactly opposite the bar nor do you want to have some of those remaining bottles of your past where you can go and where you can be tempted in your place neither if you have a, a tendency to watch obscene things on the tv or your laptop simple thing is ensure that you watch your tv watch your laptop in front of your family members or even you watch your phone only when family members are around and when others are around because my friends, times are dark. Satan is not keeping quiet. and He is getting very, very agitated. And you know, the best way to bring a believer down, he'll just go put that temptation. He'll walk away. The rest, we will do, we will do everything. And then he'll sit back, he'll enjoy and relax because he knows those consequences are going to catch up with us. Those consequences are going to affect our mind, our body, and it can also affect our relationship with others. So that's why Jesus is telling and not to entertain any of that. Just put it aside. It's not worth it. So two things that we looked at today. One is you need to take that corrective action. You see a temptation, you see a challenge, scroll away, turn away, turn the other direction. The second thing that can really help you and me fight temptation is that we keep eternity in mind. I just want to conclude with these verses. 
And if your right hand causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. So Jesus once again is focusing not on the immediate temporal aspects of life. He is focusing again that all your actions on this world, world has implications into eternity. Lastly, we will quickly look at what Paul says and we will close with a word of prayer. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 9 Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or whether bad. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well pleasing to God. So, Paul is telling us whether we are in this flesh, in this world, or out of this world, present with the Lord Jesus, our one single aim should be to please God. And Paul, I really love Paul because in all his, his sermons or his messages to the Corinthians church, to the Ephesian church, he keeps on telling them, I wish that I am absent from this body and I am present in the Lord. It's more glorious to be present with the Lord. But for your sakes, I am staying back here. For your sakes, to build up the churches, I am staying back here. So Paul, he was literally torn between heaven or on earth. And you and I should aim to be like that. We should be so heavenly minded that these things of this earth don't trouble us, don't disturb us, challenges can come, temptations can come. But we continue to be strong and keep our eyes on it. And so two things that are going to help you and me overcome the lust of the flesh or anger or whatever it is that tempts you. One, we take that action. We scroll away, we turn away, we turn the other side. Next time, I am sure, I guarantee, when the temptation comes, the Holy Spirit is going to remind you of what you heard today. And there is going to be a divine strength and empowerment. That's why it's so important to renew your mind with these words. Quickly summarizing, remember, your thoughts and your heart are very, very important to God. So when you see those negative thoughts, those tempting thoughts, take note, pray immediately or think on something else that is beautiful. Then remember, the doorway to sin, the doorway to a man's heart is his eyes. And when sin enters through the eyes, that's when it gets into the heart. Be very careful. At the initial stage, what you hear, what you see, stop it off, cut it off. All of heaven is backing you. And finally, don't forget that you and I must always be eternity minded. And when we are eternity minded, this life is going to be blessed and joyous. And you're going to be more than a conqueror over every temptation that may knock at your house or that may knock on the doors of your heart. So we'll, let's close with a word of prayer. Before that, if anyone would like to give their tithe and their offering, God says that he loves a cheerful giver. Don't give grudgingly, but give. Let a man give as he determines in his heart. Not out of compulsion, not out of obligation, but let him just give for the gospel and to spread the gospel and to God's kingdom. Let's just pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we pray for everyone who has contributed into your kingdom this month online, who has physically given Father God, whoever that may be, Lord. Your word says that you love a cheerful giver, Lord. Even as they are giving cheerfully, Lord, we pray that you will bless them abundantly, Father God. You will bless everything that they have in their hands abundantly, Lord, so that each of them may have all sufficient to take care of their families, to take care of their loved ones, and also for every good work that you have planned for them, Lord. We bless the tithe and the offering, Lord. May people see multiplication because of your blessing upon their hands, Lord, upon their finances. In Jesus' name, Father God. Once again, Lord, we thank you for your word that has come to us, Lord, so clearly, Lord Jesus, crystal clear, Father God, that you desire for us to be holy, Lord. You desire for us to be set apart for the work of your kingdom, Father God. Father God, we pray that the Holy Spirit will engrave these words 
on our hearts, Father God. Tomorrow when we see a temptation, we thank you, Lord, that the Holy Spirit angels are going to help each of us overcome them. In Jesus' name, Father God, we believe every trace of temptation, addiction, no matter what your children have gone through, Lord, we pray and believe that they are broken off today, Lord. The power of those temptations have completely lost control over each of us and everyone viewing online, Father God. We declare these things in Jesus' name, Father God. Once again, Lord, we remember every single person sitting here watching us online who needs a healing, Father God. We know that nothing is impossible for God, Lord. You are Jehovah Rofi, Lord, the God who heals our diseases, Father God. Father God, we pray that each child of yours would lift up their hands and receive healing from you today, Father God. Lord, we come against every sickness, illness and mental oppression, depression, feelings of sadness, rejection or whatever they may be, Lord. We come against those thoughts. We come against the evil that may be pressing your children, Father God. We declare that every single sickness and oppression cease at the sound of your name today, Father God. In Jesus' name, we curse every sickness. We command sickness to leave everyone. In Jesus' name, we curse mental torments, oppression, feelings of sadness, Father God, depression. We curse all the works of the enemy. In Jesus' name, Father God. Father God, once again, we bless anyone who needs a financial miracle, Lord. Anyone who is trusting you for a job, Father God. We know that delay is not denial, Father God. In due time, we believe they will see that financial miracle. They will see that job that you are going to bless them with, Father God. In Jesus' name, Father. Once again, may everyone have a very blessed and a fruitful week in Jesus' name. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the sweet abiding fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each and every one of us, both now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you everyone for joining us today. And thank you everyone who's viewed us online. God bless you and all of you have a blessed week. Thank you.